Former Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting November the 15th, 2018, 6 30 p.m. in Mountain Session. Uh, you all stand. of peace and harmony and love, which we'd like to bring back to our city so we can move forward in a straightforward direction. We pray, O oh Lord, for all your blessings that you share with us. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's have it. This is Daisy Truth number 949. Oh. <laughs> in the place to a flag, which is right over here to the right. And they're ready to start. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
years as an alderman. Eugene Christian for grandfather years as an alderman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even. There's still debate on. I think they're off by two years exactly. How many yeah. years? About, about how many years have you served? Twenty-two. Twenty-two years. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. Damn, you didn't get no retirement. <laughs> but uh, so tonight, new board steps on board, and we will look forward to moving on to uh, getting the town going in a positive direction. Uh, that being said, at this time, do I have a motion for approval and or correction of the minutes of the Board of Mayor and Auburn meeting date is October the 25th, 2018, and committee and department report? I've got a motion by Auburn and Eugene Christian. Do I have a second? And I have a second by Vice Mayor Carl Ward. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. At this time, visitors comments. All persons wishing to address the board shall stand and state your name and address and shall be limited to a three minute presentation. The board may not participate in any discussion and cannot vote on the subject you present. Absent an emergency, the earliest time the board might discuss a vote on your matter will be at the next board of mayor all of the meeting. Individuals and or group representatives who have placed an item on tonight's agenda will be allowed to make a brief comment or presentation uh, when that agenda item is up for discussion. At this time, I open the floor to visitors' comments. Do we have any visitors' comments? Yeah. Carl Lawson. Yeah. Carl Lawson. Yeah. Carl Lawson. I have never asked for anything in this town to this board at a meeting. I'll get back with you next minute. I next meet. I've never got anything. Now I did talk to uh, the board here about the, the war situation when they. They got the ditch line up there in front of my property. I didn't get anything. Your attorney, he runs them to whatever you want to call it. We're not feasible. We're not allowed to do that. What, that, what we should have had was the uh, attorney down at the airport when they tore up that property and they're full of water, which you've seen that in the paper. And they got that fixed. I don't know why they couldn't fix the situation up there in my post. And there'd be 30 days, 90 days to pass. I haven't heard anything from anybody. I fixed the property myself. I didn't ask anybody else to. Of course, your attorney, he run down there, got one of the interns or whoever. That we cannot do that. If this town can't fix it, how did they get back down there at the airport? They made them fix it. The big swimming pool down there, as you've seen in the paper, when they worked on it, run the water down over their property. If they can do that down there, I can't see that thing done up here. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Anybody else? No, okay. There being no more comments. Uh, old business, ordinance number 18 476. This is an ordinance opt out of the continuing education requirements for the planning commission set forth in Tennessee Code annotated 13 4 101. This is the second reading. Uh, do I have a motion? Second. Motion by Alderman. Uh, Eugene Christian, I have a second. I'll second that. Second by Vice Mayor Carl Wolf. Any discussion? There being no discussion, roll call, please. Alderman Eugene Christian? Yes. Alderman Margaret Christian? Yes. Alderman Wanda Davidson? Yes. Alderman Garrett White? Yes. Alderman Jennifer Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Carl Wolf? Yes. Mayor Chris Jones? Yes. Ordinance passes. <laughs> ordinance number 18-477, this is an ordinance to opt out of the continuing education requirements for the Board of Zoning and Appeals set forth in Tennessee Code Annotated 
13-7-205. This is the second reading. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Alderman Eugene Christian. I have a second. I'll second that. I have a second by Vice Mayor Carl Ward. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Alderman Eugene Christian? Yes. Alderman Margaret Christian? Yes. Alderman Wanda Davidson? Yes. Alderman Garrett White? Yes. Alderman Jennifer Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Carl Wolf? Yes. Mayor Chris Jones? Yes. Okay, that completes our new business at this time. Our newly other. What? Old business. Old business. Oh. I said that completes our old business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We thought you said new business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I want the new business. Come on up, new guys. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> but don't y'all leave yet because uh, I want the three that's coming down. I have something to present to you guys. I'm, I'm going to give these out. I'm going to show everybody what these are. These are uh, flags that say Town of Mount Carmel and recognition for distinguished service honoring, in this case, Alderman Eugene Christian. With great appreciation for your many years of dedication and commitment. Thank you for going above and beyond service for the citizens of Town of Mount Carmel 1997 to 2019. And since they do have our years. You do? Appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
So here's how the voting will operate. Um, we will first vote on Carl's nomination. If Carl receives the requisite votes, then he'll remain in the position. If he does not, then we will vote on Miss Williams' nomination. If she receives the requisite votes, then she will be in the position. Uh, you can't vote for yourselves, so the two of you will sit out the voting on your respective nominations. Um, and just remember that you make sure you vote for the candidate that you want, that way you you know that you're casting your vote with confidence. Can you read that? You cannot vote for yourself. you found that you can't vote for yourself? It's, uh, well, it's not settled law in Tennessee, but the state courts have ruled in the past that you can't, that governing board members can't vote for themselves in appointments to positions. For instance, if you were appointing a position outside of the board, um, there's no settled law on voting for yourself in an election of this sort. However, MTAS has advised that it may be best to avoid voting for yourself in the event that there's some contestation of the vote because the courts haven't decided and so it keeps you out of a potential issue. I have been, I've been told by another lawyer that they can vote for themselves. I mean, they they potentially can. However, um, it is a matter of unsettled law. The, the state courts have not created law on it. The state legislature hasn't put down a statute on it. Um, the only thing we have to go off of are prior determinations on similar issues with boards voting for appointment of members of the governing body to positions. Um, so I think the safest bet is that the person just refrain from voting for themselves. However, if, if you all would like to do it a different way, that's perfectly fine. I think um, it should be done that they could vote for themselves. So I think that the board will have to ultimately decide that. I, I don't really see where it's going to matter one way or the other. Y'all are going to talk from one vote and two and vote for themselves. I'm about to do it anyway. So, uh, <laughs> this is just from the legal opinion that I read today by Sid Hemsley from the Municipal Technical Advisory Service. So, that's where I got my information from. All right. We'll just do a uh, real quick roll call and whether or not they want to vote for themselves. So, we will allow them to vote for themselves or not. So let's just do that. Uh, Mike. Alderman Wanda Davidson. And, and this, this is voting. This, this is not voting. Let them vote for themselves. Uh, Alderman Wanda Davidson. Yes. Alderman Stephen McLean. Alderman Stephen McLean. Alderman Pat Stillwell? Yes. Alderman Jennifer Williams? I would say no. Well, 
Vice Mayor Carl Wolf. Yes. Mayor Chris Jones. Yes. All right. Yes. On the first nomination. Did, wait a minute. Do I have any further nomination? Okay. Nomination cease. Okay. Roll call on the first nomination. This is a roll call for uh, to keep Vice Mayor for Carl Wolf. Vice Mayor Carl Wolf to remain Vice Mayor. Correct. Uh, Alderman Wanda Davidson? Yes. Alderman Jen Gillum? No. Alderman Stephen McLean? No. Alderman Pat Stilwell? No. Alderman Jennifer Williams? No. Vice Mayor Carl Wolf? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Chris Jones? Yes. Yeah. So we, we proceed to nomination for Alderman Jennifer Williams? Yeah. Alderman Wanda Davidson? I'm at abstaining. Alderman Jim Gillum? Yes. Alderman Stephen McLean? Yes. Alderman Pat Stilwell? Yes. Alderman Jennifer Williams? Yes. Vice Mayor Carl Wolf? No. Nope. Mayor Chris Jones? I'm going to vote yes. yes sir. All right. Alderman Williams is now Vice Mayor. Congratulations. December meeting, um, if you want to place this issue on the agenda, we can discuss it at that time. Uh, well, he's suspended rules. I guess we can go ahead and discuss it. We can discuss it, but I mean, we don't have any, we don't currently have a proposal in front of us. Well, here's the problem. We don't have a party in unit here. 
Why do we have an appeal in here? We need to get rid of the appeal. There is no such thing. If you screw up and you get fired, why well, find you another job? It's the only thing I can take because you ain't going to come over here and get paid to sleep for me. That's why you need to change these rules. And the motion, I'm, I'm going to make the motion to stay right there until we get it done. I'm going to miss on a motion, but it's got it. Something has got to do. Maybe on this particular case, we still have to have this in. If we don't have the court, because that's what the rules already stated, and you've already called it. I understand that, but the appeal, appeal procedure in this in this village it needs to go away. You can't keep protecting people that is a legal screw up. That's just the way I'm going to work. And that's what and that's what's been going on here for years. They come over here and get this appeal approved. They go back on the job, and that's wrong. They go right back out there and do a crime again. What a huge crime anyway. And that's why it needs to go. Can we do a motion to do away with the appeal hearing after this initial one? It's on the, it's on the, on the book. You, you, we can do an ordinance to do away with the appeal hearing. Okay. Yeah, it'll have to be in the form of an ordinance, uh, but we could just make an ordinance that excises that portion of the code uh, and just removes it entirely. That is an option. Can we do that and vote on it tonight? No, it's going to take, yeah. it's going to take, because we don't have it before us and it wasn't, I wouldn't want to pass an ordinance on first reading that hadn't been properly published in the agenda. So, so can you do it at the next meeting? Yeah, you could have first reading on the ordinance at the next meeting. Yeah. But it takes two, it, it'll take two readings to pass. Yeah. So what's your, what are you, what are you asking? Do away with any appeal that's come up after this one? This this appeal process we have here in Mount should be defeated in here. This is not a jurisdiction of jury and jury case. And we're not here for that. It shouldn't be in there. I mean, I've got a funny ideal why it was put in there. And I've got a funny ideal that needs to go away. Start with that. It's been in there for how many years has this been in there? I'd have to look back on the order. That's before we got hired. Really. It would be okay if you had a bargaining unit here, but you don't have one. It's just something somebody's done for a buddy of theirs for you. I see it. Well, it was, what I'm saying is it was done way back in the 80s. Yeah. I think the 80s, I, I was there in 91. It's sort of like death, isn't it? It ain't nothing permanent. Yep. Yeah. Got that layer. On this appeal, it, it was set up way back under. Uh, I'm sure they can't hear you. Y'all can get my sound. When this appeal was set up, it's my understanding that somebody was dismissed because somebody didn't like them. They could come to board and fill their decision. Now, I agree we are not a judge and jury. I agree with that. But I still like the appeal that somebody is dismissed. Just because you don't stick her life. I think it's wrong. The, the whole purpose was in the appeal was not to give one person power to ultimately get rid of somebody that remained ultimately with one person in power and something happened. And that's what he just said. If they get mad at him or something that's near him, he just had an employee and opportunity to come back and that's what he's done. I don't understand the purpose of it. I'm just saying that. If you've got a habitual offender out here, and I'm not going to say anybody's a habitual offender, they're going to keep coming back, want their job back. Where's the breaking point? We have the right to work laws in Tennessee. So, I mean, it goes against, you know, we talked about this a lot when we did the personnel policy, trying to take that out, because it really does interfere with management being able to manage the employees. And it doesn't take away their ability to do it in a court of law. They can. But it does take away the board having to say so. And um, I work for local government, and we never get that kind of process. That would 
was never part of your job process. If you got dismissed, you got dismissed. I know uh, our neighboring sister down there actually has personnel for it. It might be something worth looking at. The way it's set up now, certain ones get filled and others don't. Mm -hmm. Well, anybody can get an appeal. No, they can't. No, they I got the night of mine. No, if anybody yeah. can get an appeal. Because the way the procedure is set up is that if it's a department head or management that makes the termination, then the appeal went to the board because the board eliminated the position. There was no appeal set out in the in the appeals procedure. Well, what about the second position that I was terminated from? You eliminated one position, but you term terminated it from the other. Um, to address the fact, the at will employment issue, though, more fully, I've got a legal opinion from 2016 that actually lays out pretty clearly the fact that because our charter makes tennis, makes our town an at will employer, even the fact that we have this ordinance that has created this appeals procedure, it's uh, preempted by the charter. So the appeals procedure isn't necessarily even that um, based on our charter making us an at will employer you know, the town has abided by it and has attempted to provide due process for employees that agree um, i understand every situation is unique however based on our charter there should be no appeals procedure anyway i agree um, well, what was he the filed it. He, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. He asked why we have an appeal next month. As long as the as long as the procedure's in place, the risk of denying the appeal in certain situations is greater than just going through with it, even though it's a superfluous procedure. I mean, the fact we don't want to be seen as denying due process. Does that make sense? Um, it creates in the in the ensuing lawsuit of potential litigation following the termination. If you go in and then you violate your ordinance in some way, it makes it harder on you in that lawsuit. Does that make sense? It creates a new issue that you have to try in court. Whereas if you don't have this appeals procedure at all, the only issue you're trying in court is the validity of the termination. I think that's what it should be. No appeals process at all on the group. And, you know, our neighbor is under the same charter that we are. Uh, the fact that they have an appeals Which procedure. Which neighbor are you talking about? That neighbor Church or that neighbor? Churchill. Okay. They have the same, they're in the same charter as us, uh, to my knowledge. So, you know, I think that I would like us to do it the way that the state requires. Um, just so that we know we have everything laid the way we want it to. Um, and I know that I have harped on this point before, and you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, but I do want some clarification, Mr. Gilliam, with your motion and what you desire. Would you like to look at the personnel policies and procedures again? Because the last time we tried to pass the new personnel policies and procedures manual, it failed due to the fact that it had removed this appeals procedure. And I don't know if y'all remember that vote, but that was the reason we didn't get new policies passed. Um, we could do this multiple ways. We could have an ordinance that just gets rid of the appeals procedure and we could wait on the rest of it, or we could renew a vote and have the new personnel policies and procedures manual up for consideration and potentially deal with a lot of different policies all at once and address the issue that you're talking about. Well, I want it done away with, and I don't want to have to wait three or four or five months on this stupid thing to come up here and get passed or whatever. You get it prepared if you bring it up here. Get rid of it. It does not need to be in there. Okay, right. what, what he's asking is you want an ordinance eliminated? Is that what we have to do? Go through an ordinance? That's what you said. We have to go 
It has to be an ordinance. We can do one of two ways. Okay. We can an ordinance, a short ordinance, a short ordinance to eliminate the procedures, have a personnel policy and procedure, or a complete revamp of the personnel policy and procedure. If you're just wanting to eliminate this right now, then I would recommend your motion be to uh, bring it up as an ordinance to eliminate that out of the personnel policy and procedure. Can I have both, please? <laughs> you can. Well, you well, it work either way. Then let's do it. If you wanted to, you could do both. You could have an ordinance that eliminates that section and then an ordinance passing the new, or to propose the new personal process procedure. Let's do one to eliminate the, the uh, hearing here, or the procedure. Then we'll do another one, update the personnel policy procedure. Okay. 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 Well, what I'm saying is, you want to do the personnel policy at the same time, we'll do it on one ordinance and update it all at the same time, we'll just we'll eliminate that out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can do now, it all at once, and then we can do it all at the same time. We can do it all at once, or if you're, Concerned about something in the actually, it may be better to do it the way you suggested. Now, right. one thing that I can recommend is we're going to be having a workshop coming up, a planning workshop. Is what we can do is go ahead and eliminate that under an ordinance and then sit down and look at our policies and procedures at the workshop and go over that front to back and then bring that at a later date. I don't have a problem with that with all the best dollars that they want to bring it back. I don't have a problem with that. Well, you can have my as much. Mr. Peavy, yeah. yes. let me ask something. When that was brought up before, mm -hmm. and, and you had the gentleman to come in, yes. and he re recommended, and you recommended, and Michael recommended to do the procedure. To do away with it. Yeah. Right. That's what. You all put, was doing away with, right? Yes, because I yes. remember that that uh, meeting, and so uh, so that's what we we're still recommending. That's yeah. That's as I understand Mr. Gillian's motion. That's what it is. Yes. And it this may be what we want to do logistically. Currently, our personnel policies and procedures manual was passed by ordinance, and this is just a proposal. This is an idea. We could have an ordinance just on this appeals procedure, and we can do away with the, the appeals procedure if you'd like. At the same time, we can have the first reading on an ordinance to overturn our current personnel policies and procedures manual. Then at the second reading, when you have the second reading on both of those ordinances, we could pass the new personnel policies and procedures manual via resolution so that in the future, you only have to have one vote, one month's vote to change things in that manual. Does that make sense? And that will make it easier in the future to change things if we decide something in the personnel policies and procedures manual isn't what we want. In the future, we can do that at one sitting and not have to wait two months to get it done. Um, okay. So is that your motion? What he just, that's his motion. We can have that ready to go in December. Might have to clarify that with Mary and Mike exactly. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it figured out. How that's worded there mm -hmm. with his motion. Okay, roll call, please. Get a second. Oh yeah, we need a second on that. Did we not get a second? I thought we had that. We had a second to open the floor for discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Second. I'll second it again. I think. <laughs> okay. Roll call, please. Alderman Wilson. Alderman Wanda Davidson. Yes. Alderman Jim Gill? Yes. Alderman Stephen McLean? Yes. Alderman Pat Stilwell? Yes. Al Vice Mayor Wheeler? Alderman <laughs> Carl Wall? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Wood? Yes. Mayor Chris Jones? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, I just want to thank the people who voted for me, uh, all thousand and seven people. I appreciate your votes, and I am for the people of Mount Carmel, and I'm also uh, behind our employees. 
and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to serve. We still have a wonderful town and wonderful people in this town. Amen. Motion to adjourn. All in favor, aye. Uh, before everyone gets up and starts moving around, I almost forgot uh, a couple little announcements right here. Christmas parade, December the 8th. Line up to 2 o'clock down in Hardy's. And the parade begins at 3 o'clock. Uh, participants have to register at City Hall by December the 6th. Uh, and also, we are now doing lead pickup throughout town. Uh, they ask that you don't put anything in there. Hang on just a minute. Did you send it to me in email or text? Text. Okay. Pull out the old phone here. I apologize. Uh, make sure I get this right. Lead pickup's already underway. Uh, although the weather has been some issues because of all the rain and everything else that's yes. going on. Uh, leaves should be loose, free of rocks, sticks, and uh, right to the roadside. It's important that you don't have sticks and rocks and any type of debris in because it can tear up the fan blades and the sucker machine. And uh, uh, they cannot be bagged. Uh, if they're bagged, then you'll have to be picked up by a brush truck. Uh, there's no particular schedule. They start from one end of town, they work their way through, and when they get through all the way, they turn around and start back all over. So don't expect them on any certain day or anything in your neighborhood. Uh, it's a long process. The truck only holds so much, and we only have but one truck. So just bear with them. They'll eventually get through. It might be next year, but they'll eventually get through too. All right, everybody, enjoy the refreshments. <laughs>